mentioned earlier that the occlusal scheme or occlusal design used in complete denture is called balanced occlusion or it is best called balanced articulation to include the dynamic relations in addition to static relations the dynamic relations between the uh, mandibular teeth and the maxillary teeth uh, which means the uh, eccentric positions of the mandible in addition to the centric relation now balanced occlusion is one of the most important factors to secure comfort and efficiency for complete denture in addition to other factors like understanding the patient psychology is very important also securing uh, good retention good stability from the denture in addition to the shape of the polished surface uh, the muscle balance all these factors will act together to produce a successful uh, comfortable and efficient complete denture now balanced occlusion or balanced articulation as we mentioned can uh, be successfully achieved if we manage to sit and arrange the maxillary teeth in their proper position uh, as the lower or mandibular teeth will follow the upper teeth once we sit them in a functional relationship now uh, well, let us start setting the uh, maxillary posterior teeth. Now, each tooth must be observed uh, in a three-dimensional way, from the labial view, from the occlusal view, view, and from the profile view. And it is very much uh, like uh, doing uh, the uh, Rotex cube. Now, this, the Rotex cube, you, you have to observe all the sides at the same time. It is a three-dimensional puzzle invented by Hungarian uh, architecture. And uh, uh, you have to do all the uh, sides at the same time in order to reach the final shape where you can achieve all the colors uh, uh, at the same time. Now. Uh, to control the position of the teeth in all dimensions, let us start sitting the maxillary teeth. Now, to control the buccolingual position of the uh, posterior teeth, it's very important. We have to uh, draw a line. Now, this line uh, starts from the distolabial surface, distolabial surface of the labial surface of the Canine. We mentioned that the canine has two uh, planes at the labial surface, the mesolabial surface and the distolabial surface divided by a line angle. Now, if you manage to draw a line starting from the distolabial surface of the canine, please, if you can, now, like this, we can, we draw a line here. And also at the opposite side from the distolabial half of the canine or the cuspid tooth we do a straight line now this line will control the buccolingual position of the posterior teeth all the labial ridges or the buccal ridges of the posterior teeth must lie within this can line okay uh, now uh, we start uh, setting of the teeth let us this. Okay. We'll cut a piece of wax. We'll cut a piece of wax. Uh, as we mentioned, slightly larger than the first premolar or first bicuspid then we soften the wax in the area then we pick up the uh, proper tooth be careful not to be uh, uh, misguided between the right and left teeth this is the left side we start with the left side and we place the 
first premolar. Now, now the first premolar must be uh, spaced from the canine, must be spaced from the canine by one millimeter. Now, this uh, space uh, is equivalent to the thickness of the Lycron carver. We keep this broken contact or space between the canine and the molar, the distal surface of the canine and the mesial surface of the first premolar in order to facilitate the sitting of the mandibular teeth and avoid the crowding of the uh, sitting. Now you can notice that this thickness of the, the thickness of the uh, Lycron carver is about one millimeter if you can notice the thickness. Now we we secure the position of the first premolar. Now buccolingually, as we mentioned, must lie within this line. Uh, the buccal ridge must lie within at the tip of the cusp must lie within the straight line drawn from the distal level surface of the canine. Uh, this is to make sure that the premolars uh, must not be set wider than the canines. They must not be set wider than the canine. Now, uh, the relation with the occlusal table, uh, the relation with the occlusal table, uh, the two cusps, the buccal cusp and the lingual cusp must touch the occlusal table. Now, we, ha we have here the buccal cusp and we can observe the lingual cusp from inside. Uh, the two cusps must touch the occlusal plane. Now, if we look from the frontal view, if you look from the frontal view, you can see that the premolar, the premolar is hiding behind the canine, is hiding behind the canine. This is to secure uh, the buccal corridor inside the patient mouth. Uh, okay, uh, now, uh, this is the position, the final position of the uh, first uh, bicuspid or first premolar. If you look buccally, you can see that the long axis of the tooth is perpendicular to the occlusal table. It's perpendicular at right angle to the occlusal table. Now we proceed to set the second premolar. The second premolar, we cut a piece of wax in the area and soften the wax in the area we pick up the left second premolar and we place it in the wax also the contact must be light light contact don't make a crowded uh, sitting between the teeth this is to facilitate the sitting of the opposing posterior teeth the mandibular posteriors I mean now the, the the contact is light contact between the two teeth and the buccolingual position also must confirm to the uh, straight line we mentioned earlier and the uh, relation with the occlusal table the relation with the occlusal table uh, is different from the relation uh, of the first uh, premolar. Here we have only the palatal cusp or the lingual cusp will touch the occlusal table, and we raise the we raise the buccal cusp about half millimeter from the table. As you see here, okay. We remove the excess wax from the area so we can observe the long axis of the tooth. And from, if you look from the frontal, you can see that the premolars are hiding behind the canine, uh, and we uh, raise the buccal cusp about half millimeter how we raise it we 
just soften the wax underneath and tilt the tooth in a way that the buccal cusp is raised not touching the table and in, at all times you have to observe the incisal pin the uh, zero line must be flushed with the upper surface of the upper member and the tip is touching completely the incisal guidance table with every tooth you sit you have to observe the incisal pin so you will not increase the uh, vertical dimension of occlusion now okay now the buccal cusp is not touching and the palatal cusp is touching alone and this is I will show you a drawing simple drawing uh, to make sure of this that we are creating now the uh, lateral compensating curve we can observe here if I want to have drawing here what well, if uh, uh, if this is the uh, occlusal table can I have a pen please Now, if we draw the uh, profile view for the first or the uh, sorry, the second pin molar, here we have the palatal cusp only touching the table, the buccal cusp is raised, and in the opposite side, we'll do the same. We have the palatal cusp touching and the buccal cusp. Is raised. This is the occlusal plane. And if we draw a line touching the tips of cusps, a curved line touching the tips of cusps, we can see we have laterally a curvature, and this is called the lateral. compensating curve when the mandible moves laterally when the mandible moves laterally it will move in a circular direction or circular motion and the teeth will keep in touch the lower and the upper teeth will keep in touch as we are going to show you when we set the opposing teeth. Now, this lateral compensating curve, and if we notice the word compensating, it means to compensate for something. This curvature is going to compensate for the downward movement of the mandible. The mandible in centric position uh, will be in its maximum superior position. As you remember, the definition of the center relation, it is the most intruded position of the mandible to the maxilla when the condyles are in their most anterior superior position. Now, any time the mandible will departure its center position, uh, it will go downward, either in the protrusive or lateral movement, it will go downward and this curve will compensate this for this downward movement of the mandible. Now, let us go back to the uh, sitting and we can notice here that the long axis of the two premolars is perpendicular to the occlusal plane. The incisal pin is closed in its, in its position. If we look at the uh, occlusal view, we can see that we are confirming to the straight line we drew at the beginning. And if we look at the relation with the occlusal table, you can see that the buccal cusp of the second premolar is not touching the occlusal table while the palatal cusp is touching. Now, if you look occlusally, you will see that the uh, line joining the two cusps the line joining the buccal cusp and the lingual cusp, the buccal cusp and the lingual cusp, 
is a parallel parallel lines so the uh, sitting will be uh, neat and uh, harmonious now let us proceed to the uh, first molar we cut a piece of wax in the area wider than the size of the first molar we soften the wax in the area and we place we take the lift make sure you take the lift first molar and you place it in a way that the um, mesiopalatal cusp is the highest cusp because this cusp is the only cusp which is going to touch the occlusal table and we evaluate the uh, now make sure that the excess wax does not go to the occlusal table here and we as you mentioned as I mentioned earlier make sure of the incisor pin and observe here the mesopalatal cusp is the closest cusp to the table uh, we uh, remove the wax from the buccal aspect so we can uh, observe the position of the tooth clearly now we mentioned that the straight line we draw here will touch the distal label surface of the canine as you see here the buccal ridge of the first premolar the buccal ridge of the second premolar and the buccal ridge of the mesio buccal side of the first molar now here we need slight adjustment you can push it out one little bit and you can see here uh, the four points are touching the straight line now the distal labial ridge does not touch this line Okay. Now we check the uh, relation with the occlusal table and as I mentioned the only cusp which is going to touch is the mesiopalatal cusp. It's almost there. All what we need is to raise it a little bit so it will touch the occlusal table. Now we remove the wax from the buccal aspect. And we can observe that the long axis of the first molar, the long axis is inclined slightly mesially at the neck area. You can see here, we can repeat from the beginning that we have the long axis of the central inclined slightly distally, the long axis of the lateral uh, inclined more distally, the long axis of the canine uh, is distally inclined or almost perpendicular now the long axis of the premolar is vertical and now we start to make a mesial inclination of the long axis in the first molar now the first molar will uh, uh, continue the lateral compensating curve and as we see the buccal cusps are raised the two buccal cusps are raised they are not touching the occlusal plane and here we started with the first on the second uh, premolar we started the uh, anterior posterior curvature the anterior posterior curvature now this is called the uh, anterior compensating curve which will compensate from the downward movement of the mandible in protrusion. Now, uh, we secure the position of the, sec the first molar by melting the wax around it, and we proceed for the sitting of the second uh, molar. Now, the second molar will not touch the occlusal table at all. 
it will be raised all the cusps will be raised but the mesopalatal cusp is the nearest cusp is the nearest cusp to the occlusal table and we take this into consideration when we set the second molar in the wax make the mesopalatal cusp the highest cusp and we observe here as you see it does not touch the occlusal table at all but you can notice that the mesio palatal cusp is the nearest cusp to the occlusal table now we secure the tooth in its position so we can uh, adjust it as we wish uh, while it is being held in the now once we secured the second molar in its position we observe its buccolingual position now its buccolingual position is controlled by a second straight line we have the first straight line which controls the buccolingual position of the uh, uh, first second uh, premolars and the mesio buccal uh, point of the first molar in a straight line with the distal labial surface of the canine as you can notice and we have here a second distinct line as you can see which controls the position of the or buccolingual position of the second molar where we have the uh, buccal ridges the mesial and distal uh, of the first and second molars come together in a straight line now we have the first line which we call it a line and we have the second line which we call it b line now we uh, go back and check its relation with the occlusal table first of all we observe the position of the incisor pin it's the most important thing to observe now you have the zero line here and you have a complete contact here now you can see from the labial surface that the long axis of the second molar is more uh, mesially inclined than the first and the facing the occlusal uh, surface of the second molar is facing backward downward outward backward downward outward and if you look from here you you notice that uh, uh, you can see the uh, uh, mesopalatal cusp is the nearest cusp to the uh, occlusal table and you we can emphasize this uh, still the wax warm we can do little movement little adjustment with the tip of the electron carver to emphasize this and you can notice here the anterior posterior compensating curve and you can notice here the uh, beginning of the lateral compensating curve now the uh, pal the palatal or the lingual cusps of the uh, maxillary posterior teeth must lie at the uh, uh, line drawn on the lower wax rim. If you replace the occlusal table, remove the occlusal table now, uh, and uh, replace it with the lower cast for assessment. We have here the line indicating the case of the ridge we have the canine line here and we have the mid of the uh, retromolar bad area if we here draw a line and you can see the distribution of wax now the palatal cusps the palatal cusp must lie on this line here you can notice this you can see that the uh, pen is closing the inside pin is closing properly and you can see that the uh, palatal cusps touching the uh, this line here so when we set the lower posteriors they will uh, match with the crest of the ridge now uh, we proceed for the uh, setting of the opposite side uh, immediately now, as we mentioned, we'll proceed uh, for the sitting of the upper right side. Uh, we have to emphasize on the uh, buccolingual position of the teeth, as we did in the left side. Now, we start with the first molar. Uh, we have to replace the uh, 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 
size of table and its proper position and make sure that the incisor pin touches the incisor guidance table and the zero line relation maintained as it is now we cut a piece of wax uh, distal to the right canine and then we soften the wax in the area so it will be suitable to set the tooth and we pick up the first right premolar and put it in place uh, and as we mentioned remember that we need to leave one millimeter of space it is the thickness of the liquid cover as we mentioned now uh, we have to keep the symmetry between the two sides make sure that uh, we close uh, make sure the incisor pin is its place uh, now we have to move it inward so we can we keep the relation we mentioned earlier this is the A line now we just secure the tooth in its position by melting the wax around it so we can play with the tooth as we wish As we mentioned, the premolar uh, must hide behind the canine and we can must not be set wider than the canine, okay? Now, okay. Uh, the long axis of the first premolar is perpendicular to the occlusal table. Now we continue the setting of the second premolar, second right premolar, and we just soften the wax in the area so we can place the second premolar. As we remember, we need to make light contact light contact with the uh, first premolar the the outer surface of the buccal meat must confirm to the uh, A line we need to move it a little bit to inside The relation with the occlusal table, as you remember, only the uh, buccal, the palatal cusp only touches here.
I noticed that the second premolar raised the vertical dimension, so I'm um, uh, softening the wax under the second premolar and make sure that the vertical dimension hasn't been changed. Okay, now only the I'm going to raise the buckle cusp and make only the palatal cusp touches and this will start the lateral compensating curve and I can notice that the premolar is hiding behind the canine and I'm checking also the symmetry of the sitting between the right and left uh, sides so we keep the symmetrical sitting now I will proceed for the sitting of the first molar as we remember only the uh, Mesopalatal cusp will touch the occlusal table uh, while the buccolingual position we have the uh, A line touches the mesobuccal edge of the tooth. Checking the A line now. The A line is okay. We need to raise the mesopalatal cusp. So that here we started the anterior posterior compensating curve. I will proceed to set the second molar. I soften the wax in the area so you can insert the second molar. We remember that the buccolingual position of the second molar is controlled by the B line which touches the uh, buccal ridges of the uh, first and second uh, molar, this is the B line. We need to push it inside a little bit. So, this is the B line, this is the B line, and this is the A line. Now, uh, the mesopalatal cusp is the nearest cusp, the closest cusp to the crucial uh, table and the crucial surface is facing backward, outward and downward. If we look from here we have to see the mesopalatal cusp coming down looks as if it is longer than the uh, buccal cusps. Now I will secure the position of these teeth uh, by melting the wax from the palatal aspect using the plant side of the wax knife. 
to soften the wax around the neck of the teeth so the wax will hold the teeth securely and I remove any excess wax in the palatal area so I keep the uh, record base clean and keep in mind that the teeth must be kept clean uh, from wax so you can evaluate the long axis of the teeth uh, so using the spoon side of the liquor carver you can remove the wax from the buccal side of the teeth so you can evaluate the long axis of the teeth and clean the occlusal table as well from wax so it will not interfere with the vertical dimension now I'm noticing that I need to uh, alter a little bit the relation of the second molar with the occlusal plane so I can see the palatal cusp hanging behind I can expose the teeth more and keep the teeth clean this will facilitate the stage or step of festooning and waxing up now now we finished the uh, uh, setting of the teeth posterior maxillary posterior teeth the posterior maxillary okay and you can notice that we have a symmetrical setup between the teeth all what we need now is to check the vertical dimension and compare the right and left side together clean the teeth together check the A line B line here we have the B line need to be adjusted a little bit you still have the wax a little bit warm so you can do minor adjustments in the position of the teeth keep your record base clean okay. And if you uh, look uh, from the frontal view, you can see that uh, the posterior teeth hiding behind the canine. Okay. Now we, as we did in, uh, in the left side. What I'm going to do in the right side, we replace the uh, lower wax rim. Now, the palatal cusps of the upper teeth must lie uh, on the uh, line here, which indicates the crest of the ridge. Now, we replace the lower cast place and we check. We check first the uh, Incisor pin, the zero line must be flushed with the upper surface of the upper member and the uh, tip of the incisor pin must touch the incisor guidance table. Now, now we, we observe the relation between the palatal cusps and the uh, line indicating the crest of the ridge of the lower uh, cast and it seems in the proper position now uh, we are going to proceed to set the lower anteriors and lower posterior teeth in the coming video uh, and uh, we can notice here that uh, the pin uh, if we open the centric stops that we can move freely the uh, upper member uh, in uh, all directions without any separation between the 
tip of the incisal pin and the incisal garden staple and this angulation must be maintained uh, during sitting of the lower teeth okay see you in the coming video